Descorvain's tenosynovitis is an inflammatory condition that occurs near the base of the thumb at the wrist. It is also known as radial styloid tenosynovitis. Tendons are strong cord-like structures that attach muscles to bones. As the muscle contracts, it pulls on a tendon and moves the bone. Among the many tendons that pass through the wrist are the abductor pollicis longus and the extensor pollicis brevis. They pass along the radial styloid, which is part of the radius bone where it meets the wrist joint. The tendons are surrounded by tendon sheaths and are able to glide back and forth within the tendon sheaths as they move the wrist and thumb. Overlaying these two tendons is a fibrous band known as the extensor retinaculum. The abductor pollicis longus helps to abduct the thumb, meaning that it pulls it to the side. The extensor pollicis brevis helps to extend the thumb or pull it back. If the tendons become irritated, they may swell. Irritation is probably due to overuse or swelling in the area. This often occurs in mothers who repeatedly pick up their children. Irritation leads to more swelling and the tendons become more constricted. This results in more irritation, which causes more swelling. The wrist may become very painful and tender where the extensor pollicis brevis and abductor pollicis longus pass beneath the extensor retinaculum. Pain may be worse with stretching these tendons or actively using them. This is known as de Corvain's tenosynovitis. Finkelstein's test is often used to diagnose de Corvain's tenosynovitis. The thumb is grasped within the other fingers and the wrist bent in such a way as to stretch out the extensor pollicis brevis and abductor pollicis longus. If this causes pain over the radial styloid, de Corvain's tenosynovitis is probably present. Treatment options for de Corvain's tenosynovitis include splinting, ice, rest, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs such as ibuprofen, and steroid injections. If non-surgical treatment is non-effective, surgical release of the tendon sheaths surrounding the tendons is usually helpful. A small incision is made over the radial styloid. Taking care to avoid the radial sensory nerve, the tendon sheath is cut. The tendons are now able to glide without being constricted within the tendon sheath. The incision is closed with sutures and a soft dressing is applied. The procedure is done on an outpatient basis and the patient is free to go home afterward.